This is a story about the 69ers versus the Outlaws. Let's get into it. Evidence at trial showed that Christopher Cosi Mano and Michael Mincher conspired to kill a member of a rival motorcycle club and did so. After Cosi Mano, Mencher, and several of their associates followed the victim, Paul Anderson, for several miles on the highway, Cosi Mano brazenly shot him to death at a traffic light in broad daylight. Mencher was present at the murder scene and later told a confidential informant that he would have shot the victim if Cosi Mano had been unable to. The murder served to increase their status in their motorcycle club, which was an enterprise engaged in interstate racketeering. Further, the evidence supported a separate conviction for the their use of a firearm during a violent crime. Cosi Mano and Mencher were associated with the 69ers Motorcycle Club, a national organization with active chapters in several states. Cosi Mano was president of the Hillsborough County Chapter, nicknamed the Killsborough Chapter, and Alan Ginto was treasurer. Mencher and Cody James Wessling were prospects, or prospective members. In May 2018, a grand jury charged Cosi Mano, Mencher, Robinson, Ginto, and Wessling in a nine-count indictment. A superseding indictment followed two months later. A month later, a federal agent interrogated Cosi Mano. Leading up to the interrogation, Cosi Mano had been held on state murder charges and had spent months in solitary confinement. The agent told Cosi Mano at the outset that he had some paperwork to go over. He then read Cosi Mano his Miranda rights. Cosi Mano confirmed that he understood his rights and signed the waiver form, agreeing to talk with the agent. The agent told Cosi Mano that he could not make any promises, but that Cosi Mano had an opportunity to help himself, to put himself in the best possible position. I'm going to give you a lot of credit and a little grace, he told Cosi Mano. For the next five hours, Cosi Mano spoke, often emotionally, about his experience with motorcycle clubs and drug dealing. He also discussed a fight in a Miami bar between the 69ers and a rival gang, the Outlaws. At one point during the conversation, Cosi Mano asked the agent if it would favor him to put all the information out. The agent replied I don't know, and then added that honesty would help Cosi Mano out. Some portions of Casamato's statements, those relating to the outlaws and the Miami incident, later came in at trial. The government called Ginto and Wessling, who had taken plea agreements, as well as Leonard and a regional 69ers boss, Art Serrano, who had agreed to cooperate with the government. The government also called a slew of other witnesses including another eyewitness to the shooting. The following evidence was presented. The 69ers Motorcycle Club is a 1% club, meaning its members are the elites of the outlaw biker world and the 1% of society that stand by their own rules. The club has a written constitution and an organizational hierarchy. Club members pay annual dues of $50 to the New York chapter. And according to Serrano, Northeast-based chapters of the 69ers have coordinated with Florida-based chapters to distribute drugs. Leading up to Anderson's murder, the Florida-based 69ers were at odds with a rival motorcycle club, the Outlaws. To tell it briefly, the Outlaws considered Florida their territory. When some Outlaws, including Leonard, defected and joined Florida chapters of the 69ers, the Outlaws were not pleased. Tensions soon boiled over. One night, when a St. Petersburg, Florida bar hosted a bike night, Leonard and Ginto showed up to represent the 69ers. The outlaws were there too, and in greater numbers. Several of the outlaws, including Pasco County President Paul Anderson, confronted Leonard and Ginto and demanded that they hand over their club vests, or die in them. When Leonard and Ginto refused to comply, the outlaws attacked them, beat them badly, and stole their cuts. About a week later, federal law enforcement arrested Leonard on a firearms charge in New York. He entered an agreement with the government, and became a federal informant. Meanwhile, animosity between the 69ers and the outlaws mounted. Cosi Mano wanted revenge against the outlaws for the bike night incident. A national 69ers boss also wanted retribution and said the score would not be settled until two outlaws go to the hospital and we have two of their cuts. As Serrano put it, the 69ers and the outlaws were going to war. One day in late July 2017, Cosi Mano called Ginto and said he was outside a St. Petersburg bar that the outlaws frequented. Eventually, a prominent outlaw came out of the bar and left on his motorcycle. It was James Costa, president of the St. Petersburg outlaws. Minutes later Costa was shot on the highway. Ginto testified that Cosi Mano admitted to being the shooter later that night. According to Ginto, Cosi Mano gave him and Wesseling clothes and a gun with instructions to get rid of them. Ginto testified that his assistance increased his stature in the club, 
and that the 69ers expected the shooting to bolster their reputation. Hostility between the clubs showed no sign of dissipating. Following the bike night incident, Kosi Mano had galvanized the Killsboro 69ers to engage in shows of force to antagonize the outlaws. In response, a contingent of outlaws called the One Ton Crew, led by Anderson, had threatened to take more cuts from Killsboro. Then, while Kosi Mano and a fellow 69er were in Miami, they got in a bar fight with some outlaws. In the melee, Kosi Mano allegedly hit one outlaw with a plate and used a piece of broken plate to stab another. This was the state of affairs on December 21, 2017, the day Anderson was murdered. Around midday, Ginto, Robinson, and Wessling were out having lunch when Kosi Mano called. He said he knew where an outlaw was and told the group to meet him at the 69ers clubhouse. When they arrived, Kosi Mano and Mencher were getting their bikes ready, gearing up for a ride. Wessling would later tell Leonard that, at this point, Kosi Mano said he was going to murder Anderson. At trial, however, Wessling testified that Kosi Mano said he knew where Anderson was and wanted to beat the shit out of him. The group left to go after Anderson. Ginto and Robinson took one car, Wessling drove another, and Kosi Mano and Mencher took their motorcycles. Normally, Kosi Mano and Mencher wore their 69er cuts when they rode. This time, they rode without their cuts, dressed in black, and covered their faces with bandanas. They also flipped their license plates, making them unidentifiable, and Kosi Mano removed the 69er stickers from his motorcycle. At some point, the group caught up with Anderson, who was driving a pickup truck. They followed him for about a half hour. After Anderson passed through a toll booth off the Suncoast Parkway, he came to a stop at a red light. Ginto and Robinson had fallen behind, but Wessling was still on Anderson's tail. According to Wessling, Kosi Mano and Mencher then passed him on their motorcycles and pulled up close to Anderson's truck, Kosi Mano on the passenger side, Mencher 10 to 15 feet behind him. Kosi Mano dismounted his bike and knocked on Anderson's truck window. He then fired multiple gunshots into the truck, killing Anderson. Besides Wessling, another driver on the road witnessed the shooting. Although he could not identify the defendants, he testified about the motorcycles he saw. He said the motorcycle in front, the one that pulled up next to Anderson's truck, had saddlebags and a windshield. That description matched Casamano's motorcycle. And the motorcycle behind that one, the witness testified, had graphics of SS lightning bolts. That description matched Mencher's motorcycle. The 69ers left the scene after the shooting. According to Ginto, they stopped when they got to a secluded area. Kosi Mano gave Robinson a handgun, helmets, and a sweater to dispose of. And Kosi Mano and Mencher changed into extra clothes they had brought with them. Wessling testified that he met Kosi Mano at a gas station a few hours later, and the two discussed the shooting. Kosi Mano told Wessling he had shot Anderson to protect Leonard. As for Mencher, he had phone conversations with Leonard after the killing, not realizing that Leonard was a confidential informant and that law enforcement was recording the call. By this time, news stories had shown pictures of both defendants' motorcycles, so the two discussed how they would hide or disguise the bikes. Kosi Mano, who was with Mencher, chimed in, telling Leonard that one of the motorcycles had already been changed up, while the other needed to be hidden. Later, when Mencher was by himself, he spoke again with Leonard, venting that Kosi Mano's plan to attack Anderson had been ill-conceived. I don't mind doing things, Mencher said, but not in broad daylight. Mencher also said that he would have shot Anderson from behind if Anderson had tried to get away. I would have just opened up into the back of him, you know what I mean? At the close of the government's case in chief, the defendants moved for judgment of acquittal. The jury began deliberating on the eighth day of trial. The jury convicted Mencher and Kosi Mano on some counts, and acquitted them on other counts, some of which charged Kosi Mano for his alleged role in the Costa shooting and another of which charged Mencher with drug trafficking. Without going into the technicalities, Christopher Kosi Mano, 31, and Michael Mencher, 53, were sentenced to life in federal prison plus 10 years, and life in prison plus 5 years, respectively, for conspiracy to commit murder in aid of racketeering, murder in aid of racketeering, and related firearms offenses. This ends today's story. Please like, comment, and subscribe.